Greetings, one and all. Getting the opportunity to put on the jersey, step out onto the ice, and play in a single game in the National Hockey League is something only a small percentage of hockey players get to experience in their lives. That pool of players becomes even smaller when you look at who has played 100 NHL games, or 250 games, or even 500 games. But when you get to 1,000 NHL games played, you realise that the list is pretty small, with less than 400 NHL players having reached the prestigious milestone. Of those less than 400 players, there are probably several names that might surprise you more than others, especially those that have hung up their skates in more recent seasons. Well, in today's video, we are highlighting several of these unlikely candidates as we look at five recent NHL players you didn't know played over 1,000 NHL games. Number five, Sean Hawkoff. Having been drafted 99th overall by the Edmonton Oilers in the 1998 NHL entry draft, Sean Hawkoff became a mainstay on the Oilers roster from the 2000-01 season onwards, playing for the Edmonton franchise for 12 seasons and reaching a career high in points with 73 points in 79 games during the 05-06 season. Hawkoff remained with the Oilers until the 13-14 season, where he was traded to the Dallas Stars. Hawkoff then spent the next two seasons in Texas before signing as a free agent with the Anaheim Ducks for the 15-16 season. Hawkoff played his 1,000th NHL game with the team from Sully, California, but this milestone was somewhat overshadowed by a 20-game suspension Hawkoff received on January 26, 2016 for violating the league's performance-enhancing substance program. Hawkoff retired before the 16-17 season started, and even though his last year in the league didn't give him the best press, Hawkoff finished his career with 511 points in 1,008 NHL games. Pretty good numbers for sure, but he is now the director of player development for the Detroit Red Wings franchise, and judging by how well the Red Wings have done since 2016, their player development might need a little bit of work. Number 4, Nick Schultz. As the 33rd overall pick by the Minnesota Wild in the 2000 NHL entry draft, Nick Schultz came into the league with the expectations that a high second round pick usually has. Known more for his skills on the defensive side of the ice rather than his goal scoring prowess, Schultz spent a decade anchoring the Minnesota Wild's blue line as the Wild welcomed themselves to the NHL, but Schultz never reached more than 20 points or scored more than 6 goals in a season. After two seasons with the Edmonton Oilers due to being traded by the Wild, Schultz made a brief stop in Columbus with the Blue Jackets during the 13-14 season before spending the last three seasons of his career with the Philadelphia Flyers. Schultz reached the 1,000 game milestone during the 15-16 season, his second season with the Flyers, and played in the league during the 16-17 season. Schultz is currently an unrestricted free agent in the NHL, and if no team bites, Schultz can retire from the league with an impressive 1,069 games played in the National Hockey League, but a less impressive career total of 175 points over his career. I mean, he hit 30 goals though. 30 goals in 15 seasons is good, right? That's like two goals a season. I mean, that's pretty consistent with his season-by-season season stats. So at least you knew what you were getting from a player like Schultz. A guy that was good defensively, but couldn't score goals to save his life. Number three, Matt Cook. Having been drafted 144th overall by the Vancouver Canucks in the 1997 NHL entry draft, Matt Cook became known throughout the league as one of the dirtiest hitters and saw himself suspended by the league more times than the number of teams Antti Niemi has played for this season. After nine seasons as part of the Canucks organisation and a brief stint in Washington, Cook found a home in Pittsburgh with the Penguins for the next five years, where he helped the Pennsylvanian team to a Stanley Cup victory in 2009. Cook left the Penguins for the Minnesota Wild for the 13-14 season and spent the next two years there before hanging up the skates after the 14-15 season. Cook finished his career with 398 points in 1,046 NHL games. Cook could well have reached 1,100 games played and more likely have hit 400 points if he didn't spend so much of his career suspended or trying to intentionally injure opposing players. 
To be fair, though, he probably reached that many games played due to the amount of rest he got in the penalty box, with over 1,100 penalty minutes amassed over his career. Number two, Radik Dvorak. Being drafted 10th overall in the NHL entry draft brings with it some pretty lofty expectations to be one of the NHL's next big players. And that is exactly the kind of pressure Radik Dvorak had after being drafted 10th overall by the Florida Panthers in the 1995 entry draft. After four and a half seasons in sun-soaked Florida, Dvorak was traded during the 99-2000 season to the New York Rangers, where he picked up his career high in points with 67 during the 2000-01 season. A trade from the Rangers to the Edmonton Oilers during the 0203 season saw Dvorak head to Canada for three seasons before he signed as a free agent with the St. Louis Blues for the 0607 season. After that, Dvorak returned to Florida for a second stint that saw him stick around for another three and a half seasons. It was during this stint on the 7th of December 2009 that Dvorak played his 1000th NHL game against his former team, the Edmonton Oilers. Dvorak clearly wasn't done there, as a trade to Atlanta during the 10-11 season, a year with the Stars for the 11-12 season, a short stint with the Anaheim Ducks in the 12-13 season, and a year with the Carolina Hurricanes during the 13-14 season, turned out to be Dvorak's final games in the NHL, as he finally hung up his skates after 18 seasons in the National Hockey League. Over his career, Dvorak amassed 590 points in 1,260 NHL games. Sure, the point totals might not be that groundbreaking considering the amount of games he played, but you expect a 10th overall pick to have a long and successful career in the NHL, and there's no doubt that Radik Dvorak did exactly that. And number one, Dinius Zubaris. Having been selected 15th overall by the Philadelphia Flyers in the 1996 NHL entry draft, the same year I was born, feeling old yet, guys? Zubris became the second highest drafted Lithuanian in NHL history, behind Darius Kasparaitis. And of course, Zubris had some pretty high expectations to produce for the Broad Street Bullies. After two and a half seasons in the city of brotherly love, Zubris was traded to the Montreal Canadiens, where he spent two and a half seasons before being traded to the Washington Capitals during the 2000-01 season. Zubris and the Caps seemed to be a pretty good fit, as after the trade, Zubris spent the next four and a half seasons with the Caps before being traded to Buffalo during the 06-07 season. After the brief stint in Buffalo, Zubra signed as a free agent with the New Jersey Devils, where he spent the next seven seasons before having the last year of his contract bought out at the end of the 14-15 season. After a successful tryout with the San Jose Sharks, Zubra spent his last NHL season in California before hanging up his skates for good after the 15-16 season, cementing himself as the best Lithuanian NHL player in the league's history. Dynia Subra scored 591 points in 1,293 NHL games, making him the player on this list who played the most NHL games and was definitely someone I never expected to have played that many games. But give credit where credit is due. Zubris has been one heck of a hockey player and he deserves a hell of a lot of praise from some, for some fantastic numbers and a lengthy tenure filled with success over his career in the National Hockey League. And there you go. Those were five players you didn't know played over 1,000 games in the NHL. What do you think about this list? Was it good, bad, or did you already know how many games each of these players played, you smart ass? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.